When you're doing something that you love so much that excites you, it flows over into everything. Everything you do at that moment in time is better because you're so creatively excited that, yeah, you might be exhausted, but you know, if you're working on shoes or you're working on handbags, your, your brain is clicking. You're, you're absolutely, or I am, absolutely uh, better. So if you're excited in life, you're gonna be better at what you're creating. I'm Tom Ford, I'm a fashion designer. I started out my working career as an actor. I made television commercials, mostly only television commercials, but I was very successful at it. And at one point I was probably for my age, I was playing, you know, late teens, and I was in my late teens. Uh, you know, working, I was one of the most successful TV actors for my age, I guess, that there was. So I spent half my time in Los Angeles, half my time in New York, and I realized I was, I was doing a Prell shampoo commercial and the um, hairdresser was brushing my hair. And uh, I remember him saying, you know, you're gonna lose your hair. And I was 19. And it threw me into such a panic. Uh, even starting to grow a beard threw me into a panic because my agent said, you know, you've gotta sort of cover that up with pancake or something. You're looking too old, you know, you're playing a teenager. And anyway, I won't bore you with, with all that. but. I realized that I was much too insecure to ever be an actor. Probably now if I were to go back and try to be an actor, I'd be better at it because I might actually just be able to let myself go, which you have to do if you're an actor. But I realized it wasn't for me and I realized that I wanted to be on the other side of the camera. I would be doing a commercial, listening to what the director was saying, watching how he was doing it. He would feed, feed you know, line readings to, uh, to the actors and I was thinking, no, that's totally wrong. That's not what I would do. That's not how I would do it. And that was really the first inkling I think I had that I wanted at some point to be a director. My heart lies in reality. My heart lies in, although when I say reality, film for me is reality. It's interesting because I love Los Angeles as a city. Now, one of the things I love about Los Angeles are all the scenes of films that were made and took place in Los Angeles that actually existed but didn't really exist. Pick any old film from the 1940s, the characters, the, the clothes, the dialogue, those things actually happened. They didn't happen in real life, but those people said those things, they walked through those sets, they spoke those words, and so in a certain way they're real. There's a parallel universe for me of image and of uh, fantasy uh, that isn't so much fantasy because it's forever sealed in films and in things that have entertained us for years. And this parallel universe has probably influenced me perhaps even more than the real world or the, the, the physical world that we touch. Because when I think of certain things or I think of a beautiful woman, she's most likely some woman that I saw on film as a child. or. Uh, I think of a great apartment or how, when I was a kid, how I wanted to live when I grew up. These were things that I was taking from film and from television and then applying them to life. You know, when I made A Single Man, I had already had uh, Tom Ford International for three years. I had been doing fragrance and cosmetics for about four years and I had had a men's collection for three years. And having a men's collection is very different than having a women's collection things, the changes are smaller. Uh, once you find a certain template, it's about replacing fabrics, changing your lapel slightly, slightly different shoulder. And it's, it takes less time than women's. And I naively thought, oh, I can do this. I can design a women's collection. I can make a movie every two years. But women's fashion, oh my God. I mean, because it changes, because every season you almost have to throw out everything you did the season before and start over. It has taken much more of my time than I originally naively thought it would, so I haven't been able to make a film. You can get typecast in this industry, and once you give the world your taste, as I did in the mid-1990s, and the world decides that this is what you're about, and your customer decides this is what he's about, this is what I want from him, this is what I love, this is what I like, you do get typecast into that a bit. And when I started designing women's ready-to-wear again, I had moved on a bit in my life and I designed some things that the customer immediately rejected. And so we don't want this from Tom Ford. This isn't Tom Ford. We want sexy. We want, you know, pants that make us look great, make us look tall, make us look slim. We want higher heels. We, we want sexy. So it took a, a while also to find the right balance with what I was designing for my customer. 
Sexy in 2013 is different than sexy in 1997. So while that customer wants, and maybe it's the same type of customer, maybe she's a younger version than she would have been, or maybe she's not, things do change, and our standard of beauty has changed. While they want sexy, and I've been identified as one of the sexy designers, sexy today is very different than it was in 1997. So you still have to be contemporary current, you have to react to what has gone before you, what's happened, what's coming next, and, and the mood of, of, of the world. So it is different, but you can't make a radical swing and all of a sudden start designing, or I couldn't start designing things that maybe uh, people hadn't thought of you uh, designing before. When I first came back uh, and started designing women's ready to wear again, I didn't do shows. And in a way that was very freeing. Not only did it free me from the pressure of having to create something that would translate on a runway or photographically, but it enabled me to really concentrate on the customer. And I'm not sure which is better. I'm still struggling against it. I have now had a women's show for two seasons, and I have found myself falling into that almost trap of thinking, oh, I need more color for the magazines. Oh, you know, will it run, you know, will it play on the runway? How will it look digitally? How will it photograph? You know, all those black dresses, they're gonna all look the same when you see them online. So maybe I need to change that. And when you start changing fashion to suit medium that you're using to uh, display it, sell it, uh, talk about it, I don't know whether that's right because you end up creating things that maybe the customer, when they're in a small space, touching, feeling, trying on, doesn't respond to the same way. Then again, you have a lot of customers who want what they've seen in a magazine, who want that thing that's been photographed on every other woman that, you know, hopefully, every woman, you know, every celebrity that, uh, you know, many celebrities, let's say. And you have that, that woman who wants that. So I'm not sure yet. I think we meet our customer first in, on the internet. Uh, I think everyone today, I mean my father who's 82, he lives on the internet. He reads every newspaper every morning from the New York Times, the London Times, he's online. And he's often emailing me saying, oh, you looked great last night in that blue velvet jacket when you were, you know, because he's popping up pictures of me from, you know, so I think that this has, uh, and certainly younger customers and, and uh, you know, uh, they live completely in a different way than my generation did. Uh, and I mean, I'm, obviously I'm very computer literate and live online like everyone else, but not like a 14 year old or a 25 year old uh, does who's literally glued to uh, their Blackberry or iPhone. I'm not good at multitasking. Now I can carry 20 different projects in my brain, but when I'm focusing on one, you can say, okay, Tom, let's talk about this, and I focus on that. I can't talk about anything else, I can't think about anything else, I'm focusing on that. Two seconds later, you can say, okay, let's focus on this one, and I can focus on that one. So all the time in my head, I'm carrying these things around, and I am kind of working on them, making resolutions, thinking about things, but I can't actually physically do anything but that one thing at a time, because I'm incredibly focused. So. I'm not great at, you know, I can't do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that, as I think a lot of people are. I can't even be distracted by anything visual. I have to close my eyes so that I can really imagine clearly what I'm talking about and communicate it, which is probably becoming a bit eccentric. <laughs>